Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So this week we have a new vehicle and this is part of the drip feed from the Contracts DLC. And this is the D-Class Ranger 3600 LX. And this vehicle is loosely based on the new version of the Chevrolet Suburban. We do have an older Granger in the game, which is the 3500 LX. And that is based on an older version, particularly the 2007 to 2014 design. So it's kind of nice that we actually have a refreshed version of this model. And because they released this as a part of the Contracts DLC, it has a lot more upgrade options. Plus they also gave Imani Tech to this, and that has allowed us to weaponize this vehicle somewhat. So there will be the front mounted machine guns. There will also be proximity mines that's available, though they're not exactly explosive, but slick. Plus the option to put in remote control or homing missile jammers. Now in comparison with the older model, we definitely have a lot more options on this. But as I was going through these options, there actually are not so many. Even the bull bars for the front and back look visibly lacking. There are only a few options available. And I must say the options are actually pretty weird. Apart from the usual performance upgrades like engine, brakes, transmission and turbo and all that, the additional options didn't really provide that much. Certain options like the exhaust actually gave a few more options than possible, but generally across the board, there aren't that many. Now, even where the primary and secondary colors come into question, you will see that the primary colors would dominate almost like 90, what, 96, 98% of the vehicle. And secondary colors only come into play on certain highlights. And those highlights would be like the roll cage, uh, part of the padding and a very tiny part of the roof rack if you intend to put that in, as well as the mirrors. And livery wise, we've got the standard few kind of racing stripes that they always give, plus a few other special liveries. And from these liveries, I would say we have about three or four of them that were recycled from previous versions of other cars, like the Sasanta Nove, the Patriot Beer, as well as the hunting camel that was primarily on the Canis Seminole Frontier. So even though this is considered a new vehicle, I would say that the options given are not so many in terms of modifications. While some of the plus points is that they gave it Imani tech and armor plating and even weapons, making this another class of vehicle, just differentiating it from the older model that is available. One thing that I observed is that they actually separated the nose accessories from the hood modifications as these two options would have normally gone together in the same category in all the vehicles that we've gone through so far in the game. You'll also notice right now that we actually have fog lights and I can confirm that these fog lights actually work. Like a lot of the fog lights that we have been getting for the new vehicles uh, since the last year, which is very different from all the fog lights that we had in all the older vehicles, which did not light up no matter what we did. So I think in summary, this would be a nice vehicle to have. It is not very expensive, though I expect this to be on discount in the following weeks. In comparison to the older model, I think you actually have more options, but not as much as we would like to see. And Rockstar actually gave us the options to weaponize this vehicle together with armor plating. Now towards the end of this video, I'll be testing the armor plating just to see how many shots it would take or how many explosions it will actually take to destroy the vehicle. Now, I think we all kind of expect that for an armored vehicle like this, we would be thinking like probably two explosives, which would be pretty typical. And once I am done with the customization over here, we'll just take it for a spin around the city just to see how it handles and how fast it can actually go. I'm expecting this to be much faster than the previous Granger, though I'm not sure how fast it will be. So you can all see that later. So first, let us listen to the sound of the engine and see if we have anything special or it's just another run of the mill SUV. Well, I think the sound of the engine and the revving would be uh, very typical of an SUV. But let's just look at the speed and I think it has a decent speed. It's not too slow. Um, it's not very fast either. But it's decent, so I don't think we'll be expecting this to break any speed records anytime soon, whether for speed or for lap time. Now, handling and control of the vehicle is uh, pretty decent as well. I would say it's pretty good. 
the vehicle only has a very very slight tendency to overturn but overall it is very responsive on the steering and it's quite easy to drive now if you see me driving through the streets you will see that uh, if i go through curbs or bumps along the street it's actually handling that very well so going over these curbs and bumps doesn't really affect the control of the vehicle so much and most of the time you can see that it is just gliding through these bumps not really affected and they react very differently from the tuner cars that we have been uh, getting used to recently from the tuners dlc i would think that adding off-road tires may be a good thing if you really want the vehicle to handle bumps and curbs more effectively now i think most of us know that uh, off-road tires have higher tire walls and that would help certain vehicles just glide through whatever bumps and curves that they actually encounter. And so in summary, nice drive, decent speed, good handling on the steering, decent traction, and handles bumps well. So I'll be moving over to the next part of the video to do a simple durability test. So here we are over at the airfield, I think one of the best locations to test uh, durability. And I'm first going to test uh, using the heavy rifle because I want to see how many shots that the windows can take before it actually cracks open. Of course, we have bulletproof tires, so tires will be affected. I'm just going to start firing shots into the windows and then count the number of bullets I've used before it actually punches a hole in the window. Now, I will be using all forms of ammunition because I find that rather unnecessary. Just using this will give you a gauge as to how long the windows can last before a bullet actually goes through. Now that's a total of about 15 to 16 shots. So it should be the same for windows on either side and even the back windows. So if you're firing continuously, that's about 2.1 seconds. And I guess that's slightly better than normal windows, which often goes down if only a few bullets. Now next, let's see how many explosives it actually takes, uh, starting with the RPG. I think typically for an armored vehicle, I would say two. So that's one, and the vehicle is still intact. Let's do another one. And the second shot has destroyed the vehicle. Now let's try this with sticky bombs and see how long it'll last. It should be the same as the RPG, so that's one. And I ran the wrong way over there. So let's set this off with the vehicle still intact. And let's do another one, still putting it where the engine is. And the second one has destroyed the vehicle. So I'll estimate that if you use a homing launcher, it will probably do about two or three shots before it destroys a vehicle. As homing missiles have always been weaker than RPGs in my experience. And that's it for this review. I hope that this has given you more information on the new D-Class Ranger 3600LX and that you can use this to decide whether or not you want to buy one. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.